I will go to the altar of God. God my soul. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, we gather today on the birthday of the Christian Church as we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Pentecost, in which the Spirit of God descended and filled all who were gathered. Let us go before God, our Heavenly Father, on this most special day and make an examine of our, examination of our conscience that we might be found worthy to offer the sacrifice of the Mass. Having confessed our sins unto God and asking for his forgiveness, I ask that you please recite with me the second form of the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed. By my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault, I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon and absolution and remission of our sins. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and through his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the Spirit of the Lord fills the world, is all embracing and knows what man says. Alleluia. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, have mercy on us. As you descended upon the disciples in the upper room, so now once again descend on our church. Inflame our hearts, enlighten our minds, and purify our souls 
For together with the Father and the Son, you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven, staying in Jerusalem. At this sound they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as traveling from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The resp responsorial psalm, Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, you are great indeed. How manifold are your works, O Lord. The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Hallelujah. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord be glad in his works. Pleasing to him be my name, be my theme. I will be glad in the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Amen. If you take away their breath, they perish and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Amen. The second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Therefore, wait for me, says the Lord, for then I will change and purify the lips of the people. Come, Holy Spirit, come, and from your celestial home shed a ray of light divine. 
Come, Father of the poor, come, source of all our store, come within our bosom shine. You of comforters the best, you the soul's most welcome guest, sweet refreshment here below. In our labor, rest most sweet, grateful coolness in the heat, solace in the midst of woe. O most blessed light divine, shine within the hearts of yours, and our inmost being filled. Where you are not, man has not, nothing good indeed or thought, nothing free from taint of ill. Heal our wounds, our strength renew, on your dryness pour your dew, wash the stains of guilt away. Bend the stubborn heart and will, melt the frozen, warm the chill, guide the steps that go astray. On the faithful you adore, and confess you evermore, in your sevenfold gift descend. Give them virtues, sure reward, give them your salvation, Lord, give them joys that never end. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I will pour out my spirit upon all mankind. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. Amen. Cleanse my heart and my lips, Almighty God, as you cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal. In your mercy cleanse me so that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will give you life to your mortal bodies also through His Spirit which dwells in you. These words are taken from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Romans, chapter 8, verse 11. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters, all of us who celebrate this, the Feast of Pentecost. What an emotional roller coaster it must have been for the apostles of Jesus around the time of that first Pentecost. They had seen their master arrested and crucified. They were present when he appeared to them following his resurrection. They were present with him when he ascended into heaven. Now they were gathered together in prayer and fellowship, believing their Lord when he said to them, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. They could not have understood fully what he meant, and they sure were not prepared for what was about to take place. But they believed in him, and they trusted in him. And so they gathered in the upper room, possibly the same upper room that Jesus shared the Passover with them, possibly the same room that he first appeared to them following his resurrection. I am sure that they all had lasting memories of his presence and his words. But gathered along with the apostles of Jesus was Mary, the Blessed Mother, women who were present during his ministry, present at his crucifixion, and later to gather to anoint his body. We are also told that his brothers were with him. Now the Feast of Pentecost was a very special day of worship for the Jews. It was known as Shabbat, the Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Harvest, the Feast of the First Fruits. It was a day in which they celebrated arriving at Mount Sinai, which was 50 days after their departure from Egypt where Moses would bring the revelation of God in the form of the Ten Commandments. It was also 50 days since that first Passover of unleavened bread. And so in Jerusalem, the city of God, Jewish pilgrims gathered. The first Pentecost, as recorded in the second chapter of the book of Acts, was to be another form of celebration. It was to be a different feast of weeks, for it happened 50 days after the resurrection of our Lord. Pentecost was to be a different feast of the first fruits, for the Holy Spirit was to fill all who had gathered. Pentecost was to be a different feast of harvest. And as we read in Acts chapter 2, verse 41, there were 3,000 souls who were baptized into the faith following the Pentecost. In the Gospel of John, chapter 7, verse 33, we read the words of Jesus. I shall be with you a little longer, and then I will go to him who sent me. You will seek me, and you will not find me. Where I am going, you cannot come. How disheartening it must have been for those who first loved him. But Jesus, knowing their hearts and minds, said to them in John chapter 14, verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Do you know it was said that when the Holy Spirit came to those assembled on that first Pentecost, many believed 
that it was the Spirit of Jesus who was with them again. For the Holy Spirit was fully manifested in Jesus, and the Spirit of God knows no difference. And so, on this, the birth date of the Christian Church, as we celebrate Pentecost Sunday, let us celebrate our beginnings. Let us celebrate the fulfillment of everything that Jesus had said and everything that Jesus promised. Let us celebrate that the Holy Spirit comes to those who honestly and humbly seek Him, because it is only through the power of the Holy Spirit that the church will grow and expand, because it begins in the hearts of those who truly seek God. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Accept, O oh Father, Almighty and Eternal God, this Immaculate Host, which I, your Lord, have set by the Lord you, by living in my true God, for my countless offenses and omissions for all faithful Christians living and dead, and the sacrifice may avail thee and then unto salvation and life everlasting. Amen. O oh God, we just and do men with great dignity and worthiness. And through Jesus Christ, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the
sisters that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, Comforter and Advocate, sanctify our gifts. God is in truth, defend us from evil, and enrich us with your grace. For together with the Father and the Son, you live and reign one God, forever and ever. Coming of your kingdom. 
May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord, amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them, he instituted these holy mysteries and would spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, as often as you shall do these things, do them in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant, Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch, Abraham, and that which your high priest, Melchizedek, offered you a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive from this most sacred altar, the body and blood of your Son may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants, especially those children who lost their life in Texas this past week, who have now gone before us with the sign of faith and now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. 
And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, out and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ your son and our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit forever and ever consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life amen Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world grant us peace Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you. Who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness, 
may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God, the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I will take the heavenly bread, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul into life everlasting. Amen. shall I return unto the Lord. For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. <laughs> Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not good to Jesus, but I'll take your word and I shall be healed.
the Lord which I have received, and your blood which I have drunk, cling to my innermost being. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, our Comforter, through this Holy Eucharist, grant a new vision and a new counsel, new wisdom and fresh understanding, the revival of our piety and the renewal of our fortitude so that we may go forth from this holy place faithful in service and fruitful in deeds establish in us the knowledge of god and the fear of the lord that we may seek the kingdom of heaven upon the earth for together with the father and the son you live and reign one god forever and ever sign of your majesty be acceptable to you through your mercy may it be effective for myself and all those for whom i have offered it through christ our lord amen may the almighty and merciful god bless you the father the son and the holy spirit amen the lord be with you a reading from the holy gospel according to saint john in the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning, through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The tr real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. And he who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God, these are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willing it, 
but by God. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us, and we have seen His glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God.